Surviving Hiroshima, A Young Woman's Story Retail Sample On this particular morning, my grandmother was preparing rice pancakes, and my uncle David had already gone outside to play. Grandfather was in the bathroom shaving as my mom performed her pre-breakfast chore of tidying up the living room. David popped into the house with an excited announcement. Sammy's right over our old house, he shouted, and then ran back outside to watch. Grandfather was grumpy. I wish they'd drop whatever they're going to drop and get it over with. He didn't like to start breakfast before the all clear. Grandmother sighed, God's mercy, and let it go at that. Mom focused on her cleaning and said nothing. She would remember David running into the house and shouting again moments later. They've dropped something, he began, and it looks like a small para. There wasn't any noise, just a blinding flash and shattering concussion. The walls of our house blew in like cards, and we were on the floor, buried in piles of tile and lumber. Then darkness like pitch-black night, and a smell. And they were among the lucky ones. My family's former home on Nagarkawa Street was instantly incinerated. So were my family's former neighbors. Temperatures reached 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit in a 900-foot diameter around ground zero. And the initial shockwave traveled across the city at 7,200 miles per hour slowing to 768 miles per hour, the approximate speed of sound. The force of the blast was equivalent to roughly 16 to 20 kilotons of TNT and left a radius of destruction of approximately one mile, with resulting fires destroying almost everything within an area of about 4.4 square miles. Few in the blast zone knew what hit them or felt any pain. After David's warning, my mom later recalled, she saw a blinding flash from the city. At that point, it was too late to take shelter. In her memoir, she wrote, I suppose it was five minutes before I tried to move. Something wet was trickling in my face. I reached up and felt it. It was warm, probably blood. But it was too dark to see. Perhaps I couldn't see. Perhaps I was blind. My eyes strained in the darkness. Although she couldn't see, her hearing hadn't been affected. The first sound she remembered hearing was David, half calling out, half crying. Mom, Mom, where are you? It's so dark I can't see. The dust was beginning to settle, and Mom became conscious of movement across the room. It was David under a pile of rubble. She was suddenly aware that their house had fallen on them. The bomb obviously must have landed in their yard. It was lucky that David had just stepped into the house before the explosion. He would have been killed had he been outside. She heard another voice. David, David, are you all right? God save my boy. It was grandmother. At least three of them were still alive. 